goofing around. You know, I could just go live and do that. <laughs> just not talk and just play. Morning, Bob Schumann. Good to see you. Rainy here in Southern California, which we love, of course. Um, it's supposed to rain all day. I just went to Starbucks, got a little wet. My pants are still a little wet because it was windy too. You know, hard to get that, hard to keep the rain off you when it's windy and you go walking in it. So, but uh, anyway, let's see. <coughs> what is going on here? Let me uh, get the Discord up. Let people know I'm live. I'm live, alive, and alive. Hey, Pepper, what's going on? Pretty humid in Alabama, right? My son Jack was in Alabama uh, last year. No. Yeah, it was last year. Oh wow, twenty three degrees. Woo, that's cold for March. We're we're well into March. <laughs> we're almost April. It's really cold. Hey Holly, how's it going? My son works for Northrop Grumman, and he was at uh, the, there's a launch uh, site in um, Huntsville, Alabama. So they must have been launching something. <laughs> Sco, what's going on? Well, I dropped that new video last week and you know, <laughs> you, did you see it? it was like, at first I thought, oh my gosh, I, I caught lightning in a bottle a second time. Uh, <laughs> I got a theme. I'm just going to do nothing but seven tips for older beginner videos. I've got, I found another list that I'd started and it's so funny because I was like, I started like three different lists for, to, on a follow-up that, and for that, my giant monster smash, I did three different, um, uh, lists on three, three different computers. Well, one on my phone, one on my studio computer, one on my laptop. And so it was like. Uh, after I did the video, I found the two of the lists that I didn't know I even did. And I was like, oh, yeah, those are good tips, too. I was like, dang it. <laughs> so so I do potentially could probably come up with, you know, uh, like, are you kidding? Seven more tips. For <laughs> Something like that might be kind of funny. Um, but it's still doing pretty good. I mean, it, it did this kind of thing where it went, and it went, whoa. I'm like, yes. And now it's just kind of a steady climb. Um, right now, 5,800 views, which isn't bad for <clears throat> how many days coming up on four days. So, uh, that's not bad at all. And I'm hoping it continues to have momentum. Um, I did put a link, you know, I can change the little cards that drop down. Uh, so on my most popular video, um, seven tips for older beginners, number one, uh, 7.1, um, that one, at the front of that now, you, there's a link to this one, uh, or a little card that bops down. And <clears throat> so, um, that was, uh, so So I've linked to that one, and um, the other thing I've done is, and I hate them, but I did it, because it is I've gone to non-skippable ads. Now, non-skippable ads rarely last longer than 15 seconds. They're typically five seconds. But someone hit me to the fact that, look, the skippable ones, if people skip it, you don't get anything. So I'm like, ah, if I'm going to do this, I might as well maximize my potential on it. So I, you know, and people that have YouTube uh, premium or red or whatever it's called. They don't see ads at all. Some of you don't see ads. Here. Hey, Bruce. Okay, well, let me get some highs out of the way. Hey, John, good to see you. Happy Monday. I won't be here next week. You see a little, little thing down here? Poof. I'm a, Beth and I are heading up the coast a little bit and see some friends and, uh, so, just going to kind of, hey, Sam, Stainless, what's going on? 
Now, have we had, have we had this discussion? Are you related to John Stamos? R remind me to tell you my John Stamos Michigan story, okay? Um, maybe he was there seeing you. <laughs> so remind me. So, see, I have uh, I have requested if you plan on doing more Apex behind the scenes in the future, the Mayhem music packs have some epic guitar solos. Oh, hmm. Thanks, Sco. I, you know what? I have to look it up. Well, the, <laughs> I'm not gonna. <laughs> I have to transcribe my own solos. Like, oh man. Hold on a second. Mayhem is that what it's called? Let's see. Is that? Let's see. I, let me. I'm just looking in a folder to see if it was how long ago that was. Um, yay, Apex, Mayhem. Oh, wait, Mayhem, oh, wait, that's a, that's a character, okay. Seer, Valkyrie, okay, that's going to be further back, I guess. Let me go back here. Uh, Valkyrie. Oh, weird, I got a biker bar source, huh. Uh, fuse, dead fuse. Loba, Loba, Revenant. Wow. Where, where, how far back does Mayhem go? I'm in, a, I'm in my last folder now. Um, no, this is. Rampart, Watson. I'll have to, let me look at, let me do a search for Mayhem, because that sounds familiar. Hmm. Q sheet, no. Oh, there it is, season eight, Mayhem theme. Where is that? Music two, okay. I just looked, I must have looked right at it and just missed it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so you're saying this one has huh. I'm not seeing any guitar solos in here. I see power. <laughs> I, I I will often name the files that I'm sending to Stephen funny just so uh, just to, not all of them, just like one per pack of file dumps. I will name one of them goofy just to make him smile because he's sitting in a dark room like I am and I, I named this one file I said dude what's with the bass six player <laughs> so I don't know what this sounds like but yeah it's like crazy bass six stuff so anyway okay I got to catch up on my text thing uh oh all right. Oh, I gotta find out. I'm 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 anxiously waiting with bated breath if Sam Stamos is is related to John Stamos. Same spelling, I think. Um, okay, Sco, duly noted. I think you asked that somewhere else before. Um, let's see. But that was season eight, so I'll try to remember that. I'm not. You're not related. Okay, we had this discussion the first time I was on your stream chat. <laughs> oh, and you've heard the story. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> then I'm keeping the story to myself. Hey, Kumar, what's going on? <laughs> I look sexy in my beard. I'm too sexy for my beard, really, is the truth. Um, about when Fuse was... Oh, okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, Bruce Dennis. Hey, do we have everybody? Dennis is here. Okay, cool. All, all, of, all of our administrators are here. Um, hey, Aslan, good to see you. AJ, good to see you. Uh, Max, David Sillers. Hey, what's going on? Uh, who else is here? Gary. Gary Book's here. Well, we got a, we got a quorum, I do believe. So um, we're gonna learn a new song today. We've talked about this song, um, and uh, uh, it's I believe a California song. You 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 will easily guess this one. 
Um, but the um, I didn't really take any notice of this song probably for a good 20 years until it was covered by somebody. It really it wasn't a hit, I don't think, when it came out. It was just a, it was almost an album filler, in my opinion. Um, it's actually a fairly simple song. Um, again, we're doing uh, acoustic because we did electric last week, kind of. I mean, Everybody Hurts is, could be played on, the, all these songs can be played on acoustic or electric, doesn't really matter. Okay, my in my head, what I'm trying to trying to do is give you a catalog of songs that a catalog of songs that that give you some different skill sets. And this one, we'll, we'll we're going to be working on finger picking. That's another clue. Um, and then um, uh, the um, uh, you know we got four, we got you know songs that have different skill sets. But also, I'm trying to do songs that you can kind of sing around the campfire kind of thing. Where Because that's, to be honest, the, some of the best times I've ever had playing guitar has just been hanging out with friends sitting around a campfire, you know. Um, I mean, it's fun. It's fun to play in front of thousands of people. You know, that's that's fun, too. But you're also got that thing in your head where you don't want to make a stupid mistake, <laughs> you know. Uh, and uh, when you're playing around a campfire, you really don't care. So you might. You might want, you should care maybe, but, um, so my new video, <clears throat> uh, seven more tips for older, all beginners, um, Bruce, it's already up to 5,800 views, <clears throat> but, uh, it, it really started to climb there for a second. I thought, oh man, I got a, I got a fireball. Now the thing that's encouraging <clears throat> is that I'm getting a lot of, um, views from suggested videos, which tells me that's from YouTube. And so the like count really helps. And. I, I had like 140 likes or something or whatever it is, and then I had just had one like dislike recently, so um, that changed it now, not 100% anymore. But um, and then the browse feature somebody somebody you may I think I know who it may have been this guy that kind of compl complained about or said I I'm 78 I have no interest in being a band and I'm like it's not exactly what I said in the video I said play with others. Um, you know, and that, you know, cause that's where it's fun. So it doesn't have to be a band. You don't have to start a band, but you can certainly like sit in a room with another guitar player and jam cause you both learned something. So, uh, yeah, that's, you know, being in a band that may not be for everybody. <clears throat> being in a band is like being in four marriages. <laughs> Basically. There's a lot of, a lot of fights in bands. <laughs> so where are my picks? Well, you know, time for me to get out a new pick. Um, so, um, oh, I, it's funny. I was just thinking. I was just thinking yesterday, Holly, that um, you know, when I'm on, I've got three administrators: Holly, Bruce, and Dennis. When I'm on, Holly's having breakfast, Bruce is having lunch, and Dennis is having dinner. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I. That's what I'm going to envision from now on. <laughs> chord is that? Well, I mean, with the capo on, this is E. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say E flat six, not E sharp five, because I've got a five here. So I want to, I don't want to contradict that and have to say E with a five and a sharp five. So, so that's an E flat six. Or yeah, that sounds like E flat six though. E flat six would be this. Just think of chestnuts roasting on open fire when I hear E flat six. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that would be E with a flat six. Hey, Wynn, what's going on? Sko is in the house. Oh, wait, you were, oh no, Sko, you were, you were in the house before. Aslan, you gotta go. Okay, well, have a great morning. D. Rue, good to see you. Yes, when I was doing cattle drives, I actually have a student. In fact, you should follow his YouTube channel. Um, I had a student uh, who, he looks like a cowboy. He does that kind of, he does videos on cowboy culture. And he does a lot, he goes to a lot of dude ranches. He went to the uh, Quigley, did a th video on the Quigley, uh, the Quigley shoot up in Montana. Um, he just hit me to a, 
a dude ranch that I think I'm going to go to in the fall, uh, do some horseback riding. I haven't ridden horses in a long time. Um, and then, um, uh, yeah, so his, let's see if I can find his YouTube channel. I, so I haven't done guitar lessons with him in a year, but I've done two YouTube lessons with him, teaching him how to use YouTube. And, um, I think it's just his name. Oh, well, this, his channel's called Today's Wild West. So I'll just, yeah, there it is. Boom, simple. His name is Mark Bador. He's a nice guy, super nice guy. And he was a newscaster in Michigan, actually, of all places. You might even remember him. Um, and then he moved out here and to do it, I think. But then he ended up being a writer for CBS News. And then he quit that to kind of do his own thing. Um, uh, so he's kind of... Um, kind of, kind of uh, doing. He does West. He does these videos oftentimes for PBS. So, and I was kind of shocked they don't pay anything for him, which is kind of like what? What? Well, then what's his motivation? So that's kind of what he's doing. He's taking these videos he did for PBS that he produced. So they're, they he owns them, um, but then he what he does is he uh, repurposes them. And I was helping him with that. And so the first time I met with him last year, he had under a thousand subscribers. Now he has over 6,000. So you can check that out. Also at the top of the very top, well, you can see the discord link, join the discord link. Uh, also at the very top, I put a link to this for the shoe shove capo. Um, so still my favorite capo, I think the shove. The nice thing about the shove is that you can, um, Kind of adjust the tension specifically for the guitar. It doesn't really clip on the headstock, so that so that convenience is not there. Um, but uh, it's definitely um, handy to you know to not have a capo that's going to clamp the strings too tight, like a, a Kaiser might or a Dunlop. Um, and so now um, I also have the G7, and those are great too put all the capos on the guitar but it's, a, it's such a weird capo it's such a weird design you just squeeze it and it stays right but now the new ones aren't like this and I think because I was I was having I mean maybe you can still get this one I don't know they gave this to me so um. my actions a little low on this guitar I think I need a neck adjuster. Um, so, anyway, all right. So, song we're gonna do today. Um, so I've got it's a finger picking pattern um, that's pretty consistent throughout the whole song. Um, it's only six chords, I think. And um, yeah, the shove is super reliable. Um, I can't, you know, it's it's such a such, a, and I have it set too tight right now, but it's such a really brilliant basic engineering concept that I can't imagine one ever going bad. I've never had one break. Um, oh, I've never had a Kaiser break either. Um, but you can, like I said, you can adjust it just to the right tension so that when you throw it on, it's not, if it's too tight, it's going to push things sharp. So, okay. So I'm capoed at the third fret, if you hadn't already noticed. Sorry, my headstock's not really in the picture here. Uh, has somebody guessed this? Been guess, anybody guess? So, okay, I don't really, it's a California song. It's uh, 70s, I uh, had a, uh, I think it was late 90s, there was maybe mid 90s, there was a, a cover that did, that actually was more of a hit than it was originally. Um, California song, finger picking capo second fret, acoustic, uh, or I'm sorry, capo third fret. Uh, Yes, Holly Landslide, which you probably already know. So this is going to be a boring lesson for you. But I, you know me, I'm always trying to give, um, I'm always trying to give, let me get, uh, edit this. I'm always uh, trying to make sure I sneak in a little bit of theory or 
I didn't really do any studying about this song in particular. Um, I did watch, uh, there's the um, great video series. Uh, I don't know where you can, I think it's Amazon Prime is a good place to see them. Uh, it's called Classic Albums, and they did the Fleetwood Mac album, and I think they did Rumors. There's also a couple of videos on the making of Rumors, I think. It landslides on Rumors, or is it on Fleetwood Mac? Now I can't remember. <clears throat> Someone look that one up for me. Okay, so we're all, we, we're going to need some basic chords. Let's go over the chords first. And um, there we go. Are these the chords? Yes. All right. I'm going to drag this over here. Boom. Big enough for you. Where's the little dot? See, oh, that's what I used to adjust it. You gotta grab that little dot. So these are the chords, basically. It's 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 pretty simple. Now the verse. Um, it's basically those three chords, and ad infinitum. That that's my favorite part right here. Right here. When it goes from the the uh, the A minor seven to the to the F sharp. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I, I've got I'm not going to put the PDF. I've got a whole PDF of this. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the. Where is it? Tom's Lessons. Okay, PDFs. I'll put this chord chart there. <clears throat> but I did it. So the PDF I did of it is not tab. It's just the chords. Um, and uh, it's kind of the map, roadmap of the whole song. So I'll put this in there too. The thing we're looking at right now, that's going to be there. And I'll go ahead and put a little bit of tab that I created. Here, oops. So there is this much tab that I did. I didn't do the whole song in tab. That would have taken me too long. Uh, but I just did this much in tab, <clears throat> just so you can kind of get a sense of it. I'm dragging that to the Discord link, uh, Discord as well. So if you go to uh, that link that I posted at the top, uh, you can download all those things and print them up for yourself so you have them. Um, what is this? This is the variation. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so I am not completely sure, you know, it's, it could be this pattern, all right, and I'll show you the alternative, I think it's that pattern much of the time, and then it's this pattern sometimes too, where it plays all eight eighth notes. All right, so that's the bottom one, and we're going to woodshed that. Or you can fill it out and do the top pattern there. Which is almost easier just because it keeps going. Okay, now I'm going to show you those. I'm going to make these smaller, though, so you can see my hands. Or maybe I'll do this. I'll put this up here, move this down here, make this smaller, because you know these chords. All right. Put this over here. What we have here is a failure to communicate. Is that Alabama? <laughs> That's from Cool Hand Luke, right? The sweatiest movie ever made, according to... Sumner Sloan. Okay, does anybody know that reference? <laughs> okay, so let's see. I can, I'm going to make this top thing a little smaller. Is Catherine here? Okay, so let's, let's just work the chords first. Let's get the chords. 
All right, so you got your capo on the third fret, hopefully. Um, if not, um, I already closed that window. <laughs> not, that, not that Amazon would get it to you before the end. They get close, though. It's pretty close. You could probably get it before the end of this live stream. <laughs> if a capo. Uh, but most of you should have a capo. Um, if you don't, you can play in first position, um, but it's going to sound funny with me. All right? Charlie B., what's going on? Sm is it smoking? No. I... I, I, was it smoking the band? Am I confused? We have what we have here is a failure to communicate. I thought it was cool and look, but you're probably right. But my reference to Sumner Sloan is actually to Cheers. Sumner Sloan's only in two episodes. The first episode, then much later, when he comes back. Well, like the fifth season, and he he comes back and they're having an argument about what the sweatiest movie is. And Sumner chimes in with Cool Hand Luke. And everybody's like, yep, that's it. <laughs> it's from Cool Hand Luke. Okay, Buford T. Justice is the guy from... Yeah, that's right, yeah. It was cool, okay. Yeah. What we have here is a failure to communicate. All right, so we have a C chord. And now here's the one, another thing you want to note that we're basically, in the verse, we're only on the middle four strings. Okay, so I want you to try to do this if you can. Um, you can strum it, but try to grab it with the, the fifth string with your thumb, the fourth string with your second finger, or first finger, second finger on the third string, and third finger on the second string, okay? So you just, it's, you know, it's funny because that's one of the things doing, um, uh, what's that called? A roll. That's sometimes hard for people to do. It's like, they think it's a fast finger picking pattern, and it's really not. It's... Whoa, that's fast. No, it's actually I'm just peeling my fingers off like this. It has nothing to do with this song. But it's a good skill to have. And usually when you do a roll, you're anticipating the measure. Okay? So if the beats are one, two, three, four, you want the last note to be the downbeat. Okay? Two. So sometimes you can go on the beat. Two, three, where you start with your thumb on the beat. One. Two, three, four, two. But generally, when I'm asked to do a roll, it's usually it's anticipatory. Okay. <laughs> Word for the day, anticipatory. <laughs> Somebody write that down. Uh, and you could totally do a prod rock version of this. I'm sure someone's done it. The last two bars, did you upload it? The last two bars. Oh, what happened? Oh, did, did the PDF not load the last two bars? How many bars? I don't even know how many pages is it. Oh, no. Oh, okay, you're not talking about the PDF. No, that's what that bar is right there. The one, yeah, that bar, that little bar there between the chords and the, that's the only, the only difference between, um, so I, I think sometimes it's just, you know, it's fairly random. The chorus is much more random and much more complex than we're going to make it. Although I think there's a second guitar in there. Well, there's obviously another guitar for the solo. <clears throat> But what we want to do is we want to get the chords down first. So we're going to see, and again, we're only thinking about the middle four strings. Okay? These would not be, obviously we're not going to strum all six strings on a C chord anyway, but middle four strings. And then the G over B, I'm just going to take my second finger and go up here to the B note. And it's really not B because we're capo, but I'm going to just humor me here. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make you learn the position at this moment. And then my pinky is down here on the third fret of the second string. And we're treating this is zero. So this would be one, two, three. And four, we're never gonna use four. Dukes of Hazard. It might be in the Dukes of Hazard too. C, okay. And then, sorry, I gotta click away from Discord or it's gonna beep on us. Um, and then the G over B, okay. And then again, that's second fret on the fourth, fifth string, open, open, and then third fret, 
on the second string, okay? And you can just practice, grab it once, grab the G over B, and it may take you a minute to, to kind of get your fingers shifted, but I'm taking off my first and third finger and I'm adding my pinky and I'm moving my second finger. Just, you can kind of look at the path, like look at the path that this finger's taking. And then the thing is when we go to A minor, it's just like going to C, but without adding the third finger. And then we go back to G over B. So that's the whole song. So C, I mean that whole verse. And it does it a long time. <laughs> it does it a long time. And then, you know, songs back in the day didn't get to the chorus as soon as they do today. Pop songs today get to the chorus really quick. And the intros are average three seconds. Whereas I think the average intro in the 80s was 23 seconds for a song. I, you know, and there's a there, there may be a correlation there because remember back in the 80s there were DJs and they they talked and blah 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 and that was always made me mad because I'm trying to record these songs with my cassette recorder and the DJs are talking over the intro and then you can't you can't learn the intro because they're talking all over it right. Um, but then <clears throat> we're in the 70s uh, and the, but as stations got more and more automated um, and DJs were less and less critical. Uh, the intros got shorter, and I don't know if those, there's any correlation for that. If one caused one and the you know the other, uh, but I thought that's kind of interesting. Okay, or not? <laughs> not it. Yes, that's right. Buford teach was what what we have what we're dealing with here. Pepper hears the, the Pepper hears that dialect all day long. <laughs> right, Pepper. You hear that accent all day long. It's like you're in a town of nothing but Buford T. Justices. Okay. So C and then G over B. And then A minor. And then G over B. And that's a lot of the song. Okay. Now, when we get to the chorus, we're going to go G. And all we need is the bottom string, third finger on the third fret. Okay. And then the fourth, third, and second string are open. Normally you play G like this or like this or whatever, but we want that open B string. I'm pretty sure that's what he's doing. Um, and I love that he uses the D7 instead of the D. It's not. I love that he uses that. Now in the chorus, he does some stuff like. Um, he messes around with that first finger. It's usually the first finger that's either hammering on or pulling off at some point in the picking pattern. And, and sometimes I think that maybe another guitar player, I'm not a good, another guitar player, but an overdub, hard to tell. Um, but uh, I'm not going to show you that. The main thing we want to get down is this pattern. Okay. And it's a simplification of a Travis pattern. Travis pattern would have a pause in the middle of it, which is, a little weird because it ends up creating a syncopated pattern. But because there's a, a note on every downbeat on this pattern, one, two, three, four, those are the downbeats. Um, technically, this wouldn't be considered a syncopated pattern. In fact, the, the variation there, that's the second right here, this one here. Okay, can you see that, Pepper? Why is it, that's so hard to point at, there we go. That one there just is nonstop eighth notes. So it can't even be construed as a syncopated. Okay, but let's go to the, we got G. Okay, let's look in the D over F sharp. I'm gonna put my second finger on the F sharp. Really A, but okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna pound that. Um, the D string is open, okay? Then we're gonna put our third finger on the second fret of the, of the G string, so we're here. And then we're, instead of playing like a D, D on top here, we're putting a C on top, which is, just, like I said, again, it gives, the seventh chords give it a really kind of folksy, homey, homey sound, you know? All right, again, and you can just put thumb and then these three fingers. You don't have to do any kind of pattern yet. And I guarantee when I taught this uh, originally, I taught it with, um, uh, with probably a four finger pattern, classical guitar style. But I'm sure knowing how um, uh, 
Lindsey Buckingham plays, I'm sure he's doing Travis, okay? So there's that chord. And an E minor, you can go ahead and make a full E minor, okay? I just wrote, you can see the dotted lines are strings you don't play, just so you know. If a string is solid and doesn't have anything on it, that means it's open, all right? So just to describe, to, the, to explain the notation, if you're wondering. Um, oh, okay. We figured it out. Yeah, yeah. Everything's up a minor third. So it'd be E flat, and then it would be uh, B flat over D, and then it would be C minor seven. And so for those of you with perfect pitch, <laughs> yeah, perfect pitch, it drives you crazy when you see, see. I was just talking to a friend about a guitar player in town that if you're going to, you know, make someone capo. Oh, thank you, Joseph. Joseph showed up, bought my coffee. Um, if you, um, he would, if you wanted him to use a capo, you had to write the, like you had to write what you the shape not the actual chord which i thought was kind of weird i like i can transpose i don't have a problem doing that i'm not actually like i said i don't transpose i'm not transpose i i actually see this as e flat it's almost more difficult for me to say that call this a c you'll see me wince or, or get a facial tick when i say c play the g over b and it's like oh no it's B flat over D, <laughs> but but yeah, so that's exactly right, uh, John. Uh, and probably I'm guessing Sam asked me the same question. And it, yeah, <laughs> so so um, so we have get G and then D over F sharp or G seven over F sharp and an E minor. Um, so the, the right hand fingering there that I was having you do with a thumb, first index, like that. Hey, hey Quail, how's it going? Thanks for your comments on that video. That was really, that was really kind of you. All of you, all, thanks for all the comments. And if you haven't seen the video yet, or if you haven't liked it yet, do, do that. If Liking it helps it give it some momentum as far as uh, the suggested video, which again, that's that's from uh, YouTube, and it's right now it's got a little bit of a bump on it, which is good. The browse feature is also, I think, generally YouTube. Then there's other YouTube features, direct or unknown, and external. So there's actually some external, but only like 1.6% of the views are external. It's very, very small. That we're, that's like 50 views. Well, of these, that's not even that many. So anyway, I'll keep, I'm just checking. I'm, I've got it right here because I'm keeping an update on it, see if it starts to spike again. It'd be great. It spiked for a second. I thought, oh, I hit, I hit pay dirt. <laughs> Just have to have a seven tips. I actually had another seven tips, right? Didn't I have a seven tips for changing chords fast or something like that? Thank you, John. Now pull a tooth out and get that money back. Pull a gold tooth out and get a lot more money back. <laughs> okay. All right. Again, C chord. So you know C chord should know it. Third finger on the third fret of the fifth string, second finger on the second fret of the fourth string, open G string, first finger on the first fret of the second string. Play those middle, you can strum it. Just the middle four strings. G over B, you take that second finger up one string, take off your first and, and third finger and add your pinky down here. Get that D note, it's really an A, F note. <laughs> A cognitive dissonance. Okay, and then, Here's the A minor shape. Same as the C shape with that, but it's A minor seven. This is A minor. He plays A minor seven. Again, that's almost a jazzier, it's a jazzier sound. Um, Now, it's, like I said, it's really hard to tell if he's doing seven notes per measure or if he's doing eight notes per measure. The, the thing is, with the verse chord progression, that eighth note will always be the open G string. So that allows you something ringing out, something's being done, something's music, music is happening in that moment when you need to change chords. Again, on piano, you can hit the sustain pedal and then put your hand over the new chord and at the same time you hit a chord you lift up the sustain pedal you can instantly change chords can't do that on guitar so we're always looking for little tricks 
And so that works out if I... Oh, wait. Oh, no. No. I take it back. It's the high note. Although, you could do the G. Now, now I gotta listen to it, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna play it because then we'll get a, we'll get a copyright strike. So, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> don't think, play, exactly. Seven older tips for new beginners. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, I could do I could do a parody too. I could do a parody one. Alex and I, I think we're gonna do uh, our ten favorite Radiohead riffs. So, um, yeah, I should show you that. I should show you one of those. <laughs> there's, there's a campfire song. Yes. Yeah, I, I, uh, there's also, yeah, yeah, there's, there's a lot of that going on. In fact, if you have tab for landslide, it's probably far more precise than I'm, what I'm going to give you. Um, main, main thing is just to kind of get a finger picking pattern down and the chords down. Um, because it's, if I were to tab it out exact, then I, you know, I couldn't have repeat signs or anything because he does do subtle nu nuance things. Um, so, oh, no problem, d -Rue. Peroni, what's going on? Good to see you. And Catherine's here, so, how's it going, Catherine? <laughs> I'm usually on her big screen TV. Okay, so, now let's start to work on this pattern. Now, this is a Travis pattern. A Travis pattern, it, it, it's, in my thinking, a Travis pattern is any pattern that kind of, uses bounces the thumb around like that it could be which is also reminiscent of one of the other um, Fleetwood Mac songs that Lindsay wrote which is what mm -hmm. how you I kind of knew that he was doing a Travis pattern on this so we're gonna let's not even have a chord let's just we're gonna middle four strings we're gonna just take your thumb and pluck the fourth fifth string and the fourth string like that back and forth that's what's happening okay <laughs> and you see it says P I P I P M P I P it says pip mm, pip P is for a thumb Pulgar, it's from this, Espanol, index and then middle. I'm not going to isolate the middle finger, but it actually is in the indejo and medeo. <laughs> it's also from the Spanish. The ring finger is the A. What's the, that's, what's the pinky? I forget. Um, but I, um, so I'm using that because when I wrote thumb one, th you know, I wrote T, one, T, Two T one T. It looked like it said tit to tit. <laughs> I was like, I can't have it say tit to tit up there. <laughs> so I got rid of that. So it says pip mm, pip instead. All right. So that's that's my thinking there. Why I went to the classical uh, notation uh, for for the fingering. Okay, but that's what that fingering means. So the, so if you learn nothing. Pepper knows this because she's studying classical guitar technique and she's studying things in a manner that's, that's, uh, she's learning the nomenclature for, for classical guitar, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, sometimes bass notes sustain, yeah, yeah. But, uh, Merle Travis kind of started the Travis pattern. It's named for him. And it was a way of sounding like um, three people. All right. Uh, when I was just playing whatever, I was in. Uh, 
kind of sound like you got the bass, or you got the boom, boom, boom. You got the chord on the end of the beat, and then you got the melody. Oh, so pinky is, so would it be M? No, because they, they can't use the letter M because it's already used for the middle. So I'm not sure. Pinky doesn't really come into play in classical music, but it does in flamenco. So I have to look up, let's see if it says it here. Uh, oh, X. They use X for pinky. For those of you. So X is pinky. I did. I I I forgot. I knew that. And I just forgot. Um, oh yeah. Uh, no, it's yeah. I wouldn't say they were noob players though. And not being able to read music is not necessarily a disqualification. George Benson can't read music, and he's not a noob. <laughs> so there's a lot of phenomenal guitar players that don't know how to read music. Uh, and even more today because people, because of the tab that got popular in the 80s. Um, however, if you want to, you can start looking at the notes up there and start to start to associate them with the notes you're playing. All right. But again, we're, the first thing we're doing is we're getting that thumb going. All right. And then it's just kind of like, it's just a, it's a pattern. Um, in fact, if we just get this pattern down, you could play it because, like I said, here is the, with a gap, with it stops on four, here it continues to four and. So the difference between the pattern here and the pattern here is there's just another eighth note at the end. So we got four. I think now that when I'm hearing that, what I'm naturally playing is I'm almost going... P I P I at the end. I'm hitting that index finger, uh, the open G string, at the end of every one of those chords. Uh, you know, like I said, I wish I could pull it up right now. But I listened to it yesterday. I was like making sure. Okay, this is close. Yeah, this is kind of what he's doing. Uh, but I didn't. I didn't get into the minutia of it. You know, the idea. If you start playing this, everybody knows what it is. Okay, that's really. We're. we're you know, I've always said. Because and I learned this from making the mistake myself. If you really get too tied up in the uh, the actual what he actually played, because remember what he did was off the cuff. He's just like, eh. well, especially on the whatever he does, you know, it's like he, it's. It's off the cuff for him. So literally, he when he's doing those riffs and those hammer-ons and everything, he's probably more relaxed in those moments than any other time in his life. And yet, if you're trying to do every single note he played via the tab exactly like he's doing it, you are the opposite of relaxed. It's the So your sound is going to be the opposite of him. Because you're trying to make sure you do every single note right. So I've never been a fan of, it's always study the player, learn learn the ideas. Like sounding like Hendrix, you can't sound like Hendrix by memorizing the tab. I remember looking, I kind of came at this conclusion when I was, I had a book of tab, or no, a student had. A student had a book of tab of Steve Ray Vaughan. And it was like this. <laughs> He's trying to get it down. He's like, yeah, man, it's really hard because he's hitting like five strings on this upstroke and then four strings on a downstroke. He's hitting six strings and then he's hitting three strings. I just can't get it. I'm like, dude, seriously. Stevie didn't think anything about that. He's just, he's just going for it. Don't overthink it. So same thing. As you're playing this, you make it your own. things yourself it doesn't really matter the whole point is is to a get the song 
adequate enough so that everybody knows what song you're playing. <laughs> okay, you know, and yeah, the song is landslide. Yeah, but the, but and and again, this doesn't really come into play so much in the verse. Um, is the chorus? He does a little bit more of the little flourishes. All right, so let's work on this pattern. I'm not I'm not going to play a chord. I'm not going to even work on. We're just use middle four strings open, and so we're going to thumb. First finger on the third string, thumb on the fourth string, and then second finger on the. Oh, I gotta get this. Not enough light here. Hold on a second. Take me to your liter. All right. To your liter. <laughs> Well, they don't speak the language. They're not native speakers, so. <laughs> All right. That's better, right? Okay, so you can see what I'm doing there. Thumb, first, thumb, third. And if you can just get that down, we're going to do some variations on this. And it will take you a while. And I'm doing what's called through strokes. I'm not resting those fingers on strings. I'm letting those fingers kind of Yeah, this is a 1990. Yeah, a 1990 Gibson Dove. They're pretty rare. You see hummingbirds a lot more often than you see doves. Um, doves, I think, are maple back and sides. So they tend to be brighter than your typical Gibson. Definitely sounds like a Gibson to me. Okay, so again, thumb, index, thumb, middle. Really hard to see that. It looks like more is going on. It looks like I'm using my third finger, I'm not. I'm just using index, middle, and thumb. Okay, now we can put the C chord on there. And right away, you'll start to hear the song. Now you can stop on the, the, la the last of the four thumb hits. One and two and three and four. One and two. No, we won't change chords yet. Or you can follow through and finish with your third. That, okay, with the second finger, right? The, so the bottom right there, that one. That one's all eight, eight that's eight eighth notes. This one above it here is... Uh, stops on the, on beat four, which I think is it gives you time to change chords, and it kind of gives it a little breather, you know. Now there's a third variation we can do. Um, we can go ahead and use our index finger again. So we go try to check uh, play. You can play on C. That's fine. Just, you, can, you can make a C chord. If, you, if you're having trouble getting everything to ring out, then just take your fingers off. But um, so thumb, index, thumb, middle, thumb, index, thumb, index. And the advantage of that, if you'll notice, the C chord, the G over B chord, and the A minor 7 chord all have an open G string. So you can use that open G string to ring out while you change. Again, it's akin to holding a pedal, sustain pedal down on a piano. Um, it's a little trick that guitar players use to hide their fact that, that they're changing strings or changing chords. If he does it, it's very soft. Um, uh, you can hear that. And that's another thing that's very difficult to do is to have individual articulation. So if you want, okay, so for people who already know this, and Holly, I think you know this song, right? And I bet you Pepper knows this song. Uh, already. So here's an exercise you can do that will give you mad skills. <laughs> okay? Play this pattern and accent a different eighth note. And then, you know, like, so in other words, accent the first eighth note. So one. one. 
Now try to accent the next eighth note, which is the G. It's hard. Then accent the next, the second thumb hit, which is on beat two. Ooh. In other words, don't accent anything else. What that will do will start to give you some right hand finger independence. Um, it was something that I had to do when I was studying classical guitar, and I didn't really understand it when I was doing it. Like, why are you having me do it? This seems like I'm getting caught, you know, what is it, lost in the weeds or something like that? And, you know, but, you know, of course, you've got a professor, he knows better. And you're just a, I'm a punk, I'm a punk ass kid at, you know, 18 years old. I figured since I said Ted, I could say ass now. I'm already going to PG 13 on this one. So, <laughs> um, but the, uh, uh, what it does is it allows, you know, when I'm doing the, Yeah, it allows me to kind of bring out certain notes at certain times if I want to emphasize a melody that's happening or something like that. Then I can do that. And, it, and so that it, it, it kind of it kind of baked into my hands that ability, which was which was really cool. And I didn't really realize it until like 20 years later. I actually sent him an email at one point like, dude, <laughs> you had me doing these exercises. I was so mad at not mad at you, but I was like, I couldn't understand why. And now I totally understand why. So. Yeah, it's it's definitely hard at first. So it's six semiquavers plus a quaver per bar. <laughs> That's Peroni, yes. <laughs> yes. Oh wow. Peroni got a music degree. Semiquavers, I'm assuming, are uh, eighth notes. Demi, demi quavers or semi demi quavers are 16th notes. Is that right? I forget. It's been a long time since I've heard that term, that terminology. Quaver would be a quarter note. Um, but you could do seven or eight semi quavers, eight eighth notes, um, or you could do what you said <laughs> six eighth notes and a quarter. Um, and then if you do full eighth notes all the way through, you could do it pure. Like that, right? Or you could go thumb first, thumb second, thumb first, thumb first, because that first, that first note, that first finger string is the G string, and it allows you to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna try to go slow. We're gonna okay play the C chord again, G over B, A minor seven, and G over B. And again, go to the Discord. You see the link at the very top here very top right here of the live stream um, that discord link um, will take you to the discord you can join it for free if you're not if you don't have a discord account you can create one real quick try to make sure it's if you can make sure that it's the same oh sorry John so we learn a new song if not attempting to play the song as close as possible to the artist I talk about learning and playing the song uh, yeah, just just learn the chords and the pattern and run with it. Don't yeah, that's there's nothing that you do. if you just do this, everybody knows what song it is. All I'm doing is the chords and the pattern. So just do that. All I'm saying is that throughout the chorus, he kind of does some a couple hammer-ons here and there. I wouldn't worry about those. If you have the tab for it and it says to do it, I still wouldn't worry about it. Um, I would I would do it when you're comfortable with the with playing it because he didn't he didn't do those. It makes it pretty, but he didn't do those at the beginning. He got the chords down first, and then he started messing around with them. Okay, you got to get the chords down first. So that's what you want to do. And that's true for any song. I would say that's true for Voodoo Child too. You know, learn the chords. Learn the chords of the song. Be able to play the song. Be able to be the rhythm guitar player on that song. For Jim, pretend like you're the rhythm guitar player, which you didn't have, for Jimi Hendrix, and play the chords to Voodoo Child. And then, um, and then you'll notice you'll start to see what he did because that's what he's doing. He was in a trio, right? One hundred percent of. 
What's the ring? I'm like, is it cat in here? 100% of Jimi Hendrix's style came from the fact that he played in trios, and he kind of had to fill it up. Same with Eddie Van Halen. It's like Eddie is one of the best rhythm guitar was one of the best rhythm guitar players in the in the world, but he's famous for his guitar solos. But his rhythm playing is unbelievable, and his ideas are great. And uh, he would create really full guitar uh, rhythm parts that were not chords. He wouldn't use chords. He wouldn't use power chords hardly ever. Um, it was always lines and stuff going on, and he just kept it busy um, and full. And same thing with Hendrix. You know, he would he would basically incorporate chords into his soloing. And that's why it's so hard. You really want to learn the song first. And so that's what I'm saying. Um, okay, so let's just do this. So two times on C and then go to G over B. Do the pattern twice. You can even do a, you can do an eight note pattern. So G over B, C. And that's, if you have the, if you have the P, uh, if you have the PDF pulled up, you can see it does this a lot. All right. And the hard part about this is keeping track of it. Sorry, I'm going too fast. And Holly, if you want to try to get that G string there at the end. Quavers are eights, so semi quavers are sixteenths. <laughs> Brain stacked. Hey, Izzy. Mama's in the house. Always late. And again. Stevie Nicks' voice. One of the things I love about Stevie and Lindsay was that, and I've talked about this before, was that when they sing harmonies, oftentimes Lindsay would sing above, above. And usually the guy would sing, you know, the woman would do the harmony above a guy, but they would flip that because in the 80s, guys sang high anyway. Not, well, in the in 70s, sorry. In the 70s, well, in the 70s and 80s, guy singers sang high, not only high pitch wise, but like high, high. So anyway. I guarantee you, uh, Lindsay probably saying hi. But anyway, it, it's it's it created a really cool texture uh, that I think made their sound even that more unique, um, and might have been the thing that set them apart from other other artists of the time. Um, <clears throat> so I mean, I just the two part harmony thing is great. I always loved Simon and Garfield. I thought they had, you know. Garfunkel came up with the best harmony ideas, uh, although it was probably Simon's ideas. I don't know. Simon's a musical genius. Um, yes, we're talking about G strings now. We're all perpetually in eighth grade, aren't we? Okay. Now, when it goes to the G chord, we're going to have to move our thumb even further. So let's practice that. We're on the G chord, and we're going to go back and forth here. We're gonna play the sixth string and the fourth string. So just bounce your thumb there for a second. Keep doing that. I gotta get the PDF up here. So I, I kind of have that roadmap because I'm not, I don't have it memorized. I mean, I kind of know it without thinking about it, but I don't wanna, I wanna make sure I do it right, not, not wrong. So like I said, it does the G over B thing a lot. Now there is one bar where it sits on the A minor and goes to the G over B. Um, so you've got this moment in the song where it's like, you know, everything's normal, and then he stick that, okay? So let's practice that. Oh, sorry, I had you practicing this. Didn't I? But the A minor, we're going to do a half an A minor bar, and then a half, half of a G, uh, half a bar of G over B. Oops. And you just practice, change it back and forth. And that really only happens happens there it may only happen the one time I 
again, I'm playing the pattern up the top there where it's a seven note pattern instead of an eighth note pattern. Oh, I don't know if this lucky having to perfect pitch, Gary. A lot of friends of mine have perfect pitch. It's not that great. <laughs> I have a friend that had A440 perfect pitch. He could not, most pianos are not tuned perfectly to A440. In Europe, they're tuned to A444, I think. So, pian so if he went to Europe, it would drive him insane to play. He was a master piano player, too. It would drive him insane to play a 444. And, but that's the reason they do that is because the organs in Europe are all tuned to A444. So they tune the pianos and the orchestras are all tuned to A444. So a lot of times when I get, if I'm playing with an orchestra in Europe, I have to tune up a little bit to match. And any, any more, most, probably I'd say 70% of feature film scores are done um, in Europe. Yeah, his Travis pattern in the boxer, right, boxer, unbelievable. I mean, great guitar player, uh, you know, it's just pretty cool guy, I imagine. I don't know. It would be fun to have have lunch with him. He would be a fun guy to have lunch with. I don't think it was it. I think he's got a good sense of humor. I remember from, I remember when he was on SNL. Uh, Lena's wondering about the E minor arpeggio. It's missing on the track. No, it's, you'll notice that the, the strings that have the dots, they're dotted strings, you don't play those strings. So... E minor, yeah, normally, and you can totally play it that way. I'm not saying don't play it that way, but you're not you're not hitting that string. So if you want to be the most efficient, you can just go G. I think that's right. See, the problem with my chart is that the the chorus is on two page. Oh, I can do that. Okay, that works out. Oh wait, I can even go further. Hang on a second. And then, oh, it does that G over B. That does the half a bar of A minor, half a bar of G over B coming out of the chorus. Um, so, so, so yeah, E minor. Out of safety, you might go ahead and throw that second finger on the E minor. And by safety, I mean just in case you happen to hit that A string. Um, I'm kind of prone to do that because it feels more natural to play E minor like this. But if you're learning it as a song, if you if you were playing this as a classical piece, you probably wouldn't put the finger down. You really, in classical music, you really only put down the fingers. You would be C, G over B, A minor, I love, that's just the best moment of the song right there, right? When it goes from the A minor seven on the middle four strings, okay, to the D over F, D seven over F sharp. Magical moment, like I always talk about a song. I always like to put a money chord in a song where it's like that's that chord is money, <laughs> and it it you know like I said it could be uh, that could be the moment that that people went oh wait I gotta get this record right so literally that's a money chord um, so it's just. And I do love that, like I said, he didn't do D. He might do that at some point in the song, but I don't remember hearing it. And it goes that again to E minor. And again, I would probably put my finger there on the E minor. So you could totally do that. Lena, sorry I didn't see your question initially. This sometimes goes really fast. You guys are fast typers. Um, but Lena, yeah, that, that definitely, you can totally, totally play E minor. So you can also play G, like you want to have all your fingers down on G, but you want that B string open. So you wouldn't play this G, what am I doing here, this G. You would play like this G or this G, okay? But I, yeah, I, I think, I, I don't have a problem not having the fingers down for G. Um, the other thing you can do is I'm kind of, I think I'm resting my ring finger on the top string. I'm not playing this, never does the top string get played. So I'm kind of like, I can just rest that there, and that gives me kind of an anchor, a home base. So my thumb is a little bit feels a little bit more secure bouncing around like this. And the only bouncing you need to do with the thumb is from the fifth string to the fourth string. So you can practice that. And I got a fake nail, by the way. It's the only second time in my life I've got a fake nail. 
I, I broke it, but it didn't quite break off. So I went to the nail salon place on, across the street and down the corner. And, uh, man, she, she, she fixed it up good. I mean, it's like, okay, I may have to have her start taking care of my nails. That might be, um, uh, when I interviewed Joe, he, he, oh, we talked, I talked about that in the Joe video. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is not news to you guys, but that was a while ago. And I still have that nail still solid, man. It's, it's awesome. So, um, I'm, I'm tempted because I like having nails, but I also like the sound of my nails and I'm afraid it's going to change the tone. But if I don't have a nail, I don't have a sound. So, so that you got the, the A to D string back, and then the low E to the D string. Those are your only two. So in the chorus, it does both, but, but it starts out with a G. Yeah, it's definitely E. It's not E minor 7. E minor 7 will be no figures. You can just take your hand and go like, Scratch your face, and everybody has to take a sip. It's one of our drinking game rules. If I touch my face, we we all take a sip. Secondhand news. That's the one. The the. Was it right? Is that secondhand news? Oh, what tempo would be normal for this song? Good question. Um, I know it more from the vocal. Uh, you know, let me let me see because you can just. It probably has a Wikipedia page. It may say on the Wikipedia page. So, um, 159, um, yeah, that, uh, so here's 150, or you could think 80 uh, as the half note. Um, <laughs> let's see we can pull it up tempo so 159 but let's but i'm curious what the dixie chicks version is okay so 159 it's probably not as fast as i'm playing That's the 159. That's pretty much where I was playing it. I mean, and you just have to be a motor. You just have to be a machine there. Now, let's see what the Dixie Chicks, if they change the tempo at all. See, it doesn't say. I'm not getting this. Oh, wait. Oh, the chick. Sorry. I forgot they changed their name. <laughs> so funny. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, wait. Here's. Oh, it's a, it's a backing track. Well, let me see what it says. The backing track. So 146. So they slowed it down. It says 146.8. Now, this is a backing track, but those are usually pretty spot on, especially if you're going to go to 146.8. Uh, now, here's the other thing. I doubt that they used a click track um, for it. Well, it'd be interesting. I mean, I could take this metronome and start it on, but back in the 70s, that was less of a thing. You know, you're recording to tape. Um, uh, you know, it, it wasn't like, the, re the reason you... The reason you record to a click oftentimes now is so you, you're you're recording digitally uh, into a digital audio system and, and you, that way you can copy and paste. <laughs> you can loop things. But if you don't have a, if you're not playing a click, yeah, he's definitely a finger picking. Yeah. Well, he plays, he doesn't use a pick ever. 
Even with the, even when he's playing electric, he uses a thumb, his thumb and fingers. He plays with his fingers and thumbs. Oh, um, you know what? Th oh, oh, you guys are talking about. See, I cannot leave the thumbnail because of playing piano, right? So no, you could use a thumb pick. So one of the things is, um, you can thumb picks can be kind of annoying. They take a while to get used to. You don't need to have a thumbnail. You can play without a thumbnail. Um, but what you can do is, if you want, you can file it down. I, this one is not that way, but I have one that I, I filed down to make it even closer, to, you know, like that. But, but a thumb pick is on the side, and a, your thumbnail is up here, so it's a different technique. That's why country players, you know, like, kind of do this. Kind of play with this collapsed hand. Classical players play more like this. Because they're trying to get that, one of the reasons is to get that thumb nail in position, right? See, this is more, you see someone playing like that, you know they studied classical guitar. You see someone playing like this, and they, and they probably did. And I'd have to look at Lindsay to see what he does there with it. But yeah, you don't need that. You, and you can just use your thumb, you know. It just gives you a brighter and a louder sound when you have a thumbnail. And I get it, you can't, when you're playing piano, you can't have a thumbnail or they or you'd be breaking it all the time mainly. It's not it's not necessarily in the way. Well, it might be in the way, huh? Because I don't play, I see, I, I play, I'm a classic, like clearly didn't study classical piano. Classical pianists, like you can tell, they play like over the top of the piano and they're coming down like this. And their fingers are almost in between the black keys. You know, it's like, it's crazy. But, you know, I play like so flat-handed. <laughs> it's I call it ham-handed. Yeah, those are two different tones. The thumb pick and the thumb flesh, totally different tone. But you can, you can you know, get a couple different thumb picks, experiment. There, there's all sorts of different kinds. There's some I've got metal ones that I use for Dobro, which has, a, you know, its own kind of unique sound. <laughs> subtle the only difference is it's cold when you put it on uh, it's actually doesn't sound as different as you would think it would sound now let's see if I can play with finger picks and that's that's a whole nother you know skill set I'm not really good at finger picks on a guitar but let's see what that sounds like that will be should be much more metallic sound uh, like I said I'm not very good you guys love seeing me when I struggle. Scrapey. Did that scrape? I don't like that scrape. And this is what, there's a trick to get rid of that, by the way. Um, a banjo player showed me this. You, tw you bend, you take pliers out and you twist the tip because what's happening is you're, it's, it's at an angle. You want it to, like, see, it's not making that sound when I do this. When I play it straight on, it's when I turn it at an angle, it does that. So what you need to, and you can't, you can't play like this. You can't play, your thumb's in the wrong position. You can't do that. You gotta play like, this is how your arm is designed. So you gotta, you gotta play like this. So what you do is you twist the pick to, to hit the string it the right way. So I didn't, these are not twisted. Um, I, on dobro, see, now dobro, that's different because I'm playing like this. I can totally come across the top. And so I don't really have that problem. Um, and it's not a problem on on uh, unwound strings, but it's, it's a problem on wound strings. So the secret is to, is to take a... And I twisted this one a little bit, but it's not twisted enough. Almost, I've seen them twist almost like 45 degrees or more. You know, 45 degrees would be about right. That's about the angle that your hand is at, right? Right? Like, that's about 45 degrees. Maybe not quite. You may not have to go quite. Maybe 30 degrees. Um, and that would take care of it. Okay. Uh, Catherine says, I started playing with a thumb pick, but I dropped, uh, used it when I started taking modern fingerstyle courses. 
uh, from South American guitars, he uses flesh on the fingers. Yeah. Well, and a lot, you like the... You like the... Like the Brazilian players, they... They like the sound of that kind of thuddy, dark thumb sound. They don't... Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it depends on what you... I mean, it's like some people uh, strum with their fingers. They can't strum with a pick. You know, they're always dropping a pick. We totally get that. So, um, is Mamba... Let's see. Alina Chan looked for Brandon Aker how to play the classical guitar without nails. Oh, interesting. Uh, on YouTube, I found that very useful and interesting. Yeah, Brandon's great. He's really good. Um, I didn't realize he didn't have any nails. But yeah, and um, for me, nails, um, I've always had trouble with my first two fingers. And, I, and part of it is my index and middle on my right hand. Part of it is because when I'm playing electric, you know, I, especially if I'm doing something funky, I'm, I'm really scraping the strings with my pick, but also getting my first and second finger in there as well. So it, I'm wearing them out just by rubbing s strings against it. But the other, the other probably most contributing factor, because these two fingers, I could grow a nail, I could grow an inch long nail on either one of these fingers. Um, and I, I have to be careful. I keep them trimmed back just so I don't break them. And then you don't have any nail. Um, but it's, I've always said, it's the arch. If you look at your fingers straight on, I'll, like on my ring finger and my, index or my uh my ring finger and my pinky have a good arch to them like that volkswagen ad from years ago where it's parked at a, underneath an arch of a bridge and those arch bridges that the romans built two thousand years ago are still there they're very strong so the arch is very strong but my first and second finger is much less of an arch it's flatter so they just they just don't last if i grow them out I, i'll put like strengthener polish on them they just, I'll break them. I scrape them up, whatever. So that's what I'm talking I'm thinking about maybe having fake nails put even on those two a little bit. Maybe just a little bit of a layer or something. She, she, you know, she made some, created some paste and it was crazy. It was like, it was like a, it was like science project. And she goes, $3. And I went, $3? And he's a 10. <laughs> so now I'm worried next time I go in, every time it's going to be $10. But, uh, but I just felt like she she had quite a little operation going on there, and I'm like, oh, and then I'm just sitting there with my thumb hanging out, you know, and she's doing the, the doing the thing and polishing it, and making it all pretty, and because she apparently has worked with guitar players before, so she knew what I needed, and she totally delivered. So, okay, so. Um, I, like I said, the PDF, did I, oh, it's still there. Um, so the chorus is, you want to get that. Where's Paul? Paul's not here today. Uh, like I said, that's the moment. Segovia. Again, that's just a great chord that if you learn nothing from else, if you learn nothing else from the song, learn that. Now, if you want to have the top string, you could add your pinky if you wanted that, you know, like playing, like nobody plays D over F sharp like this, really. Um, I might play D over F sharp with the thumb, um, I might, but most people just play D over F sharp like this, and then either don't play the top string or play it, and it's the second. Nothing too offensive about having a second in the chord, second always. But in this case, there, and if you add that second string, it ends up being a ninth chord, so that's even cool too. Uh, so it ends up being a D, well, not a D, anyway. <laughs> it's an F9 chord, but I'm not going to go there. Okay. So we get, so if I played that, it would sound like. And then. That's a beautiful chord. Get an E string in there. So, 
you can see in my in the PDF, <clears throat> if you've printed it up, it's two pages, I believe. I've basically got uh, you know six eighth notes and a quarter note. Um, and that's if we're talking about the tempo being, if we're talking about the tempo being 80, then you could call those six, there would be 16th notes or whatever. I'm not going to go get into that. Uh, but I got the tempo there. What, the tempo is the thumb. Whatever the thumb tempo is, that's the beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. Now you give me all these people I have to look up, Bruce. Who is Gabrielle Cavado? All right, hold on. Oh, okay. So she's one of those YouTube kids. Yeah, oh, right, her. Yeah, I've seen her before. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I'm subscribed. I'm one of her 1.5 million subscribers. Yeah, I don't, if I looked like her, I would have 1.5 million. <laughs> so, same with Mary Spender. Although Mary, let's see. Um, is it Mary Spender you said? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I saw it. Her, yeah, she's at she's at five hundred thousand. She wasn't she on uh she was on Beatos recently. So yeah, she's there. She is reacting to Rick Beato talking about me. <laughs> it was funny. YouTubers versus YouTubers. It's not. It wasn't a negative thing. Um. Oh, take care, Izzy. Larry Byrne, what's going on? Yeah, plays beautiful and easy on the eyes, exactly. Not me. <laughs> I'm like... I don't play beautiful and I'm not easy on the eyes. I'm the opposite of that. Yeah. All right, so... Um, all right, I'm trying to think of what else... If there's. I think you've got all the elements here of being able to put this together. Um, did I, I did not close the PDF that I'm good. I did not. Um, so again, coming out of the course, so the course is. And don't worry about the tempo. You do it at whatever tempo. That's again another moment when you do the half of a bar of A minor and half of a bar of B, G over B. It happens in bar um, 45 in the chart, but before that it happens um, on that first ending, which is bar 20, I believe. Um, so on the chart that I, it's up in the P, it's up in the uh, Discord. So if you don't have the chart, I did a full chart of the song, the whole full takedown ends on an A minor chord, so it just repeats. Again, the chorus. Now, chorus does a double chorus at the end. Now that's a regular chorus. So if it's repeating the chorus, it's going to go to the D or F sharp. If it's going back to the verse, it's going to go to the G over B. Okay, that's really the only thing you have to really remember once you memorize the verses and the choruses. Um, so the verses are just C, G over B, A minor, back to G, C over, G over B. And the choruses are G, D over F sharp, E minor for two bars, and then C, G over B, A minor, and D7, if you're repeating the chorus. Um, so then G, D7, or D, yeah, D7 over F sharp, E minor for two bars, and then C, G, 
A minor, G over B, and then back to the beginning. So it's it's a pretty simple song as far as the roadmap goes. I would totally slow it down. You know, uh, in fact, if you have a metronome, go ahead and use the metronome to kind of mark your progress. Um, uh, I'd be curious if the if it's one fifty nine all the way through the whole song. If it's not, then clearly they didn't use a metronome. If it is, he probably did. Although some people have really good time. So, bye, Catherine. Oh, it's bright too late. Kathy Short, hey, what's going on? <laughs> my comment to myself, what's that? I'm hard on the eyes. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, Dennis, you're taking off too? Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, okay. I'm confused. Who's leaving and who's staying? All right. Oh, you're not going anywhere. All right. <laughs> I will, but I'm not going anywhere, Dennis. <laughs> so, yeah, like I said, my three moderators... Um, Kathy in California, Bruce in um, Florida, and Dennis in, in Holland. I imagine that you know when I'm doing my live stream on Monday uh, that um, uh, it's there, Kathy's having breakfast, Bruce is having lunch, and <laughs> Dennis is having dinner. So that's what I'm seeing now in my head forever. Um, the yeah, and so next Monday I'm going to take the day off. Uh, we're we're heading up the coast for a couple days and seeing some friends and. Um, uh, just kind of, it's not going to be, the thing is, I, usually we go up the coast to get away from the heat, but it's not going to be hot. It's going to be cold. So it'll be cold up there, which is fine. We, um, and then, um, you know, the kids will hold down in the fort here in beautiful Los Angeles, California. Oh, Gary book. Let's see. I'm keep playing slowly over and over. Yeah. Muscle memory. Yeah. I, you know, and I, I'm having to do that. I'm working on my, um, flamenco um stuff and i'm having to kind of re you know remember that starting out slow is is better speaking of nails i've got i want to flatten this one out so um but the um uh, i'm kind of working on my piccato studies which is th this so Is trying to relax and look bored. Like I said, I feel like um, speed comes from being relaxed oftentimes, and being relaxed comes from having a bored face. <laughs> this is my conjecture, anyway. Uh, I'm going to make this smaller so you can see my face. But I notice when you see, watch kids that are like monster, like shredders, or even. Monster Shredders, oftentimes they've got this kind of bored look on their face. Now, if they're for someone like Steve Vai or someone like that, so keep in mind that when they're playing live, they're putting on a show. So if they were to look bored, their audience might look bored. So a lot of these Shredders, you know, they 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 use relaxation techniques to, to, to get to the speed. Once you have that down, then you can play it and make, have it, you can have, be hanging upside down and do it um, on stage, whatever, whatever gets the crowd going. Um, and so, you know, once you have it, you have it. Oh, thank you, Lena. God bless you. Um, and so that's kind of, but I do feel like you really have to relax. And one of the things, you know, your face, your countenance has a lot to do with um, how the rest of your psyche and body physiologically and psychologically um, interacts. And so, uh, they say if you if you're not happy, if you smile, it'll make you happy. It sends messages to your brain that oh, well you must be happy. So you start smiling, you just you just naturally you know you get more happy. So oh sorry, <laughs> did I say Kathy was a mod? Sorry, I meant Holly. You're right, Bruce. Kathy's like, oh. <laughs> you guys are like, all right, gosh, I know, right? I'm in the zone, and Kathy was on my mind because she, I was confused at which Kathy was leaving. Yeah, so and so, and this is an acoustic one. So our next one, which be in two weeks, um, I will, and that's this this is the one just next week. Um, I'm not planning on going anywhere for a while, so it's rare that I I, I take days off. Um, 
the we'll I'll try to do an electric one. So I may I may try to do a riffy one. You know, something a little bit more, a little bit less cordy. Um, because what I mean, if I go back, so last week was everybody hurts, which was cordy, electric cordy, and then we had. Uh, is there anybody out there about you know that my friend actually the, the um, that's the one that got a it got a, a, a an infraction. So if you walk, go back and watch that video, there's like a minute of it cut out that I, I went ahead and had it cut out so I could keep all the you know money myself. Not that it made any money, but um, then what was this? Oh, Rebel Rebel, which is a riff song. That one's a kind of a fun riff song. I mean, I love it. it's just pretty much that almost all the way through. Uh, here, then, it, then we did Hotel California. Before that, we did Roxanne was a chord song. Um, you know, I, I, we may do, we need to do a power chord song. I have one that I taught a lot back in the day, and it's not, it's more of a, a was it, was it two thousand? It may be nineties. It could be two thousands. Um, uh, what's this one? Uh, you got to hide your love away. Acoustic, obviously. Dazed and Confused, which was pretty much in my head, really the. Other than that, Rebel Rebel, I would qualify as a riff song. So I might try to come up with another riff song we can learn. Uh, it might be kind of fun. Um, you know, you know, like, you know. You know, something like that would be kind of fun uh, to, to get down. Um, but, uh, no, one of those songs I was in... Green Day, like their first song. And it's a good exercise in that it's just driving eighth notes and you got to change chords really fast. Um, and it's basically Canon and D by Paco Bell. <laughs> it's just crazy. It's just a, one chord, one chord away from being Canon and D by Paco Bell. Um, don't forget to like it. Yes, like away. So we got up there pretty good. We got up there almost 40, I think. 30, yeah, 40, we hit 40. It was pretty solidly in the 30s the whole time. So it was a pretty solid um, thing. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm digging the, 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 the last video is doing well. It's, it's it, Like I said, at first it started to spike like big, and I'm like, holy cow. Well, we're, I'm almost at only – I'll only refresh this. It's been a while. Let's see. Oh, it's – Yeah, so, oh, it's refreshing. So 5,900 views, almost 6,000 views. Um, and again, it's, I'm getting like 46% of my views are from suggested videos, which is telling me that, um, uh, is telling me that YouTube is recommending it, which is great. That's, that's how you get a video to, to go viral is have YouTube recommend it. Oh, I mean, unless everybody started putting it up on Facebook and stuff like that, but that's a, that's usually a cat video or something. <laughs> I should get my cat in here and put her in a video. Kitty, 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 kitty. Yeah, she, she, not, she doesn't care what I say. And she wouldn't like to be here. Larry Byrne, what's a, uh, when, oh, so here, here's what happens. That you just get a notification. Um, I, I, I got a notification. Um, it was in, in fact, it even said, let's see, it's still there. Um, Cause it's just, a, it's the last notification I got. It's in my dashboard on my YouTube studio, which if you, yeah. Um, video received copyright claim, uh, copyright owner claims some content of your video. Um, and I already, took care of this, so I don't think there'll be any options. Now it says not affected. Uh, it doesn't affect your channel. So, because um, what happened was <clears throat> they gave me three options. Uh, let me see if I can remember. One was the one I chose, which was to cut out the offending clip. Now, if they had said, oh, the whole video is, you know, copyright, then I would have just gone, okay, fine. It, and it was, they weren't even claiming that I couldn't get any royalty. It was a shared royalty situation, okay? Which means I get some and Pink Floyd gets some. The, the, the problem with that is, though, once the record company is attached to a video, and this that video was 
two hours long at least. I mean, I tend to go two hours on these things. There would be a, an ad every three minutes. It would drive you insane. You couldn't get through it. In fact, I have to go through and delete. The, the, YouTube does that anyway. I have to delete. I'll put an ad every 30, 30 minutes. Okay. If I do a two hour video, I'll go back and make sure there's an ad every 30 minutes. I figure one ad every 30 minutes is going to kill you. Um, and so, uh, but when it's a shared revenue kind of thing, then the record company goes, yeah, no, we want maximum revenue. So we're going to put an ad every three, five minutes, something like that. It's just ridiculous. Um, so fortunately it was only like a minute, like pretty early in the video. And I'm like, what the heck? I didn't play it. I was playing it throughout. I won't play it right now, but I was playing it throughout because we were learning it. And at the end, I played it all the way down. But they didn't flag that part of it. Um, and what I do try to do is I try to, when I'm playing a song, and we'll see, you know, but of the of the eight prior to today, that's the only one that's gotten a copyright strike. And, and the Eagles are famous for doing that. But if I'm talking over this, if I don't go too far without saying something, they really... Their computers, their, the box that go and get those things can't. So I could leave it and and then it would be too many ads and it would be shared revenue. I could cut it out or, oh, that was the third one was I could demonetize the video, right? Which I could do. Um, but then, you know, part of what my thinking is that all of these videos are like a little annuity. And even if it only makes a penny a month, <laughs> if you got a billion videos making a penny a month, how much is that? Hey, Wendy, what's going on? Chords in the key of C. Oh, see? Oh, hey, Wendy, good to see you. Yeah, that and that was a that was a fun series. I need to do some more. I did C, G, D, A. Did I do E? Um, I kind of, once I got the bar chord keys, the people, you know, it's like those are keys people tend to avoid. <laughs> so I should do chords in the key of F. I think that would be really popular because I could come up with a couple variations for the F chord and the B flat chord that people might be really happy about. But glad to see you here, Wendy. And go to the Go to the, um, join the Discord link. You see at the top here, I pinned the link for Discord. You may not even know what Discord is. It's just, it's it's kind of a interactive, it's kind of like a live interactive forum. And you can join all sorts of groups. It kind of started out as a gaming thing, if I'm not mistaken, Dennis, is that right? It's more for gamers originally, but now it's everything. I mean, I'm on a, I'm in multiple forums now on Discord. I don't spend much, I don't really spend this. You can hear it beeping. Um, so the straight leg acts and games, <laughs> games. What are we talking about games? Uh, let's see. Um, I'm in jo my friend Josh's. Um, I'm also Madden uh, football forum. Ritz King, which is the guy that talks about uh, the um, Apex Legend music that I play on. So yes. So okay, I'll do more. I'll try to. I'll try to make it. Uh, let's see, what, how many have I done? Um. Chords, the key. So I did E, A, D, G, and C. Hmm. So I could do, and those were all published right around in 2018. Oh, so that was in my, yeah, it was in our apartment. Um, so I, uh, I could do F. I could do B. F and B would be two weird keys, but let's see. Oh, let me do that again because I can see the. Um, the view count on them. Oh no, it just went to the first one. Well, that's kind of weird. So, uh, chords in the key. No, nope, it did it again. I don't want to do that. I want to see the view count. Yeah, it's not going to show me the view count on these. So I'm not sure. You know, if they're popular, then it makes sense to do more. Joseph, question above. Oh, Joseph, I ordered classical guitar, but someone said I'd better be off for the third. I don't know. Um. It depends. I mean, classical guitar is going to have nylon strings. It's going to have a totally different sound. It's going to be classical. It could be folk, old school folk. Remember the old school folk? You know, like, you know, the the um, Peter Paul Marion. That's they used nylon string guitars originally. 
Um, so that's kind of that sound also for classical guitar. It's a beautiful sound. It's uh, The neck is wider. So that may be the big thing where people are like, well, if you're a beginner, um, a classical guitar is going to have a wider neck. It's, it's, and I forget the measurements, but it's a little bit wider. Um, but the body is smaller. So it feels, it feels nice in the, in there, but the, the neck tends to be wider right here. Okay. They all, I don't know. It's probably about the same. Yeah, maybe it's a little, well, but, but it, it, at the head, you know, it could be two inches here and that can feel pretty wide, but if you've got kind of chubby fingers, it's not, it's actually a good thing. A lot of, um, it's funny because I, the folk singer that I have has a classical guitar, but everything about it looks like a classical guitar, but it's made for steel string and it's called a folk singer. Because folk players like to play nylon guitars, but they were stringing them up with steel strings too. So this was like designed to kind of be best of both worlds. Um, and then um, uh, the the um, but a, a, a dreadnought's going to be a bigger body. Dreadnoughts are the big, you know, like this is is this a dread or a jumbo? I can't remember what this is. I think it's a dread, but it's uh, my 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 Martin back there is a dread, um, and then the jumbo is a jumbo is actually what my twelve string is, which has kind of a, a wider bout. It's a pretty wide. This this part of the guitar is the bout right here, there to there. You can you can go by the bout width like seventeen inches or whatever, and so that um, like a, a a jumbo might be eighteen inches. I think I forget, but okay. Take care, Kathy. Kathy Schwartz taking off. Um, what did you say? Hey, Renee. Yeah, you know what? And if you don't, if it's your first acoustic, if you don't have a steel string, Joseph, I'm trying to remember. Now you've posted pictures of uh, Discord, I think, of your guitars. Um, if you don't have a nylon, if you already have a steel string, then get a nylon. It gives you another... Gives you another voicing, um, and you can get you know cheap nylons for two three hundred bucks I think, um, and uh, and you could technically string up a you can't really string up a steel string with nylon string because nylons don't have ball ends. You can buy ball end nylon strings. Uh, they do make those, so you have to specifically order ball and nylon strings that have a ball at the end of the string. Normally, nylon strings are just a string, and so you wrap it. That's one thing you learn how to do. You learn how to wrap it around the, the bridge there. See how those are wrapped. Um, and you learn how to do that. Uh, <laughs> you trust me. You learn it through trial and error. <laughs> you figure it out eventually. I mean, there's some good video. I, I, I'm not like, I'm not a master st st stringer of guitars. I, I go to my guitar tech, and I'm watching... Like, I'll show up, and he's, like, still working on my guitar. I'm like, dang it, dude. I, you said it was going to be ready. And I get there, and he's like, well, I, gotta, I just got to string it up. And I'm like, oh. And he literally, like, one minute later, he strung it up. <laughs> you know, it's like, wait a minute. Because he got a tool. It's like, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> it just, it's like, man. It's like he's putting putting new wheels on my car or something, you know. So it's – it's uh, uh, I, so I don't do videos like that because I'm like, yeah, that's, that's – I'm opening myself up to way too much ridicule. Um, but, uh, there are I'm sure some really good videos about how to string a classical guitar. Cause I'm sure, I don't know, uh, Pepper, have you ever had to break, have you ever broken a string and you're not going to break the top three strings. Usually it's usually one of the, the wound strings, usually the D string that gets too old and takes off. <laughs> you're run AJ's running out of rooms. To hide his guitar. Hey, one of my favorite jokes is my greatest fear in life is that my wife will sell my guitars. Or when I die, my wife will sell my guitars for what I told her I paid for them. <laughs> oh, you're suffering from burnout from schoolwork? No. Nah. So are you a professional student, Pepper? Is that all you do? I mean, is that all you're ever going to do? Ah, oh, man. Well, of course, you're getting like a doctor. You're becoming a doctor or something. So you're just going to have a lot of school. Yeah, solid wood is always good. A solid top in particular. Uh, so, yeah, pepper, that's probably a good recommendation. The top should always be solid. Um, if it says solid spruce top or it says solid, um, let's see, that's spruce. What's the other? My other one is, 
what's the 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 redder wood? Um, cedar, cedar top. Uh, my other my main classical guitar is cedar top, a little darker than spruce. <clears throat> not not only in look but in sound, ironically. <clears throat> 159, that's not bad. I mean, 159, yeah. I mean, you know, it's not going to be a great classical guitar. <clears throat> but, yeah, it's always the D-string that breaks on mine just because I, I let them go too long. And it's it's got, you know, the smallest metal. And it's usually wrapped around, um, like, a uh, nylon fiber. So it's metal, you know, metal around nylon fiber. So if you look at the end of a of a, the, the wound strings on a classical guitar, it's kind of like little hairs. Um, and that's part of the sound. You wouldn't put steel strings on a nylon guitar. You could, but you probably don't want to because the tension would be too, maybe too hard for the bridge. You don't want to pull that bridge up. Yeah, yeah, I, there's nothing worse, Holly, than sitting and playing at a wedding with my good classical guitar and you, I can hear the wood cracking because I'm sitting in the sun in my tuxedo. Another reason why I don't do um, uh, there's another, there's another reason why I don't do weddings anymore. <laughs> so. Oh, are those carbon fiber guitars pricey? Yeah. <laughs> so. AJ, you're just going to have to buy a secret house to keep your secret guitars in. <laughs> so. Or, or do a YouTube channel and then have you have some income and then you can write them off. Okay, your oh your classical guitar. Okay, your Cordoba. That's still it's not bad. You know, let me well let me pull up the C five. Let me pull <laughs> if you're gonna buy. Let me pull it up. Why not? Right, pull it up on uh, Amazon here and give you the link. Uh, let's see, Amazon. <clears throat> Did you get a cutaway one or or not? So the six. See, I prefer a non-cutaway because is this more traditional? It's got 123 four and a half star reviews. That's not bad. Um, I'll put, I'll give you the link and if you buy it from there, somebody it's crazy. Somebody just bought um, on my through my Amazon link. They just bought a. Um, it's not going to work. It's too long. Why is it so big? That's weird. Oh, I, I, sorry. That's that was my mistake. I clicked too much. Copy. Oh, go paste. Boop. There you go. Oh, carbon. Carbon guitars are pricey. I've I've never priced them. Oh, I've seen this one with it's a weird sound hole. That one's like 800 and then there's, yeah, the Lava Pro. I've never heard, you know, I've never played one of those. Or meh, you know, maybe I have at the NAMM show. Ovation makes them too. I mean, Ovation's always been plastic. The backs have been plastic. The top carbon fiber. I mean, I think the reason carbon fiber is a tad on the expensive side is because it's layers and then layers and layers. They just keep making it until it's strong. So and I, it may be done by machines, but there may be a, a time element to the to the process. Um, it's one of the reasons why, like, a Fender Strat is so expensive, American Fender Strat, is because the, there's, like, 20, 30 coats of lacquer on them. So they have to spray them and let them dry well. In California, you can't do it. It won't let you. So they, they send them to Mexico to lacquer them. <laughs> so it's like, it's, I mean, they just like, it just goes over the border. They lacquer them, and then they send them back over to finish the part make, making them. But, um, or Phoenix, they sent, they have a big factory in Phoenix too. So um, California's regulations are strict on that kind of thing. So um, you can do only a certain number of those things. So small, it doesn't affect independent luthiers. So much, but it, it definitely affects anyone else. Um, yeah, no, don't give up a Martin. Oh, River Songs, River Song Guitars. That's right. That's one of the carbon fiber companies, right? Yeah, yeah. Holly, you make money at it, so you can write it off. I mean, you can have a business loss on your Schedule C. 
But yeah, it's playing out in the heat. Although carbon fiber guitars are black, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it get hot? The top of it won't get hot. Do they make white carbon fiber guitars that'll reflect? Yeah, <laughs> latte. Keep the Martin. <laughs> It really autocorrect Larry to become latte. All right, I'm I'm getting slap happy here. Yeah, the Emmy. Yeah, the lava. That's what I saw that too. Yeah. Not a cutaway. Yeah, I wouldn't get a cutaway now. <clears throat> One of the reasons is, I mean, obviously, it's nice if you're going to solo up here. There's technique to playing up here that you have to learn when you're playing classical guitar. Um, but it, it's going to rob a little bit of your volume. You're going to have a, a smaller sound chamber. Um, and also it's not going to be, you know, it's just, it, to me, it's, it's just not going to resonate as well. Just go. They just the bat they just eat up the batteries. It's ridiculous. Like the the nice thing about the tuner that I can't find anymore, my favorite one, where is it? This one here, the IntelliTouch, it would shut off automatically. You know, so it would just it, batteries lasted forever in those things. But in the snark tuners, I think the snark tuners. They just Yeah, I gotta do my exercises today. I'm doing speed burst exercises to try to increase my right hand piccato, piccato speed. And I'm kind of creating some exercises myself that are like Crossing over finger wise so that I can, you know, play lines a little bit faster. These strings are getting dead, though. Man. Um, McPherson, yeah. McPherson makes a carbon fiber, but <laughs> what's the. Is it. Eight, I played McPherson's at the NAM show and they're like $8,000 or something. I mean, what, let me. let me What is it on Reverb? Maybe they're not that bad. I don't remember. Reverb.com is always a good place to go to. To get an idea of what something's worth, if you have something, or if you want to buy something, uh, McPherson Carbon Series. McPherson's also got kind of that sound hole at the top. Yeah. Oh, well, they're not that bad. Touring carbon fiber. You know, and that would be. They got one here, the, the cutaway. In fact, all of them look like cutaways. But again, it's a dark top, Holly. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that thing, if you're in the sun, <clears throat> I'm thinking that would be But Let me get rid of carbon because I, I thought McPherson's were like way up there. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, 9,400, 11,000, 9,400. Yeah, for the, I think my friend um, Sean Tubbs has a McPherson. It's kind of a standard guitar to get in Nashville. It's another reason not to move to Nashville. <laughs> I don't want to have to buy a McPherson. <clears throat> and it's partially because I think it's they're easy to mic. Um, I think, isn't there a, is there a sound hole at the top too? Is it like more than one sound hole or just the one? I'm, no, I guess it's just the one. It was a guitar that had a sound hole at the top. I forget what that one company was. Yeah, sure. It's beautiful guitars. I, I just don't. Acquired taste, I guess, right? Uh, let's see. Oh, and that's the other thing. Just keep tuning. Uh, Joseph, when you get your nylon and you get new strings, or when you get the nylon, you're gonna. it's going to take a while for it to stay in tune, okay? It's going to keep going flat. Those nylon strings have to stretch out. Steel strings stretch out so much faster than nylon, so you'll be tuning that thing up every, every time you pick it up for a good week or two, okay? Um, and it'll go it'll go flat while you play it. 
<laughs> ye dark carbon guitar co- i know it's like car so carbon i mean carbon is dark you know what do you how are you going to make carbon fiber guitars that are white it's just not it's oxymoronic right <clears throat> yeah yeah but the, but joseph wants to once your nylon strings are in tune, you're, but you, you can pick up a tuner, and once you have it, it's they're fine. Um, I I could easily play a whole gig with a without having to tune my nylon once it was in, once the strings are all worked in. So yeah, not not a big deal. Uh, Renee, is that the name of the company? That had the Soundport on top? Was it was the Soundport guitars? Is that right? Um, Sound port. No. Nuts. Oh, what's this one? Custom classical guitar diagonal. Oh, weird. Diagonal sound. I've never seen anything like Oh, yeah. Pinholes. Here's a custom t- oh, t- ukulele with a sound port. But this thing's weird looking. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. Where is the sound hole? Oh, weird. Okay, you, okay, I gotta send you this. Everyone, you can check out this word. It's like, are you, what? What the heck is this thing? Let's see if I, if it's hopefully it's not too many. No, I think it's weird. Okay, that thing's kind of weird. It's got like this weird sound port underneath the right, right here. Like, it's so weird. Um, and maybe there's another one. Because that doesn't seem like it's big enough for sound again. But it's, it's going to be beautiful tuners. It's a very expensive instrument. I don't know. Really pretty guitar, but I'm not seeing how that's enough sound hole to, to give you a big sound. Weird. Tukowiak. <laughs> Never heard of Tukowiak. Or however you say it. So what? Oh, in Poland. Wow. You would think the dollar would go further in Poland. Oh, they have some crazy. Ooh, I don't think I could play this guitar. This one's fourteen thousand dollars, guys. I, <laughs> Holly, get this one for your next game. <laughs> this one is a big giant bug. I'm like, uh, for $14,000, I don't think I want a giant bug guitar. Everybody's taking off. Yeah, I know. I'm, I, I'm clearly winding down. <laughs> if I'm on reverb, that thing is crazy. What the heck? And that's the sound hole up there. That's weird. I wonder if structurally it seems like that might be a problem, but maybe not. I don't know. It's, I mean, really interesting designs, but really pricey oh here's a 10 string harp classical guitar that's cool but again over ten thousand dollars yeah i i would have trouble playing that though i have a hard time with my loot and it's eight courses yeah <laughs> beetle guitar yeah i know weird huh holly you're like what the heck is that thing i mean that's a pricey guitar. I was like, what the heck? Yeah, you can yeah, carbon fiber is pretty pretty indestructible. I mean, if you ran over with your car, it's going to have the same result as a, a wood guitar. So <laughs> yeah, that, no benefit there. Uh, Holly, how many guitars do you have? You have electrics too. I I've, I've seen you play electric. Sadly, we're not going that far north this next week, though. Oh, oh, was it price drop five thousand? I didn't even notice that. I hate to click on it because it kind of creeps me out. Oh yeah, you're right. No, six thousand dollar price drop. Yeah, fifty nine hundred dollar price drop. You think? Interesting. I mean, I, I'd be curious. 
Um, let me see if anybody's playing. You know, I go to YouTube and maybe see if anyone's playing one. You get a sense of what it sounds like. I mean, I'm sure they have videos up on YouTube. I feel bad for pull people in Poland right now. Uh, taking on millions of refugees. Yeah, so they've got some... Yeah, these are new instruments. I have a, a friend of ours, um, a drummer friend that uh, actually uh, start, uh, was with a ministry and still is in, um, what's the name of the name? Josiah, Josiah Ventures, I think it's called, in um, Czech Republic. And um, uh, he's a very good drummer. And he went there and he ended up meeting a girl and getting married. And they have a, a, a a daughter now and um, they're in ministry together still in Czech Republic and they actually turned one of their offices into a bedroom and then they took half of the child or, or the I think they took the office turned it into a bedroom and then uh, um, the, the baby's room they cut in half and uh, they rebuilt it, their house to accommodate four Ukrainians uh, a mother, a woman and her mother, and a woman and her 15, 13 year old son, which I think 13 years old, I think is right. Like if you're 14 or older in Ukraine, they were keeping you in the country to fight, to fight uh, for Ukraine, which is interesting. So, but I thought, well, I, and we're going to send them some, we're going to send them some coin to help out with extra food expenses and things like that. So, um, if anybody's if anybody's interested in getting their contact information to, to maybe uh, support their ministry and you don't even have to uh, hit me up on, hit me up on, uh, I'll try to keep tabs on that. Hit me up on, on the discord and I can give you their contact information. Um, you don't have to become a monthly, you can do a one-time thing at 10 bucks or hundred bucks or whatever. Um, uh, usually when I'm doing ministries like that, because my income is so inconsistent, I usually just, when I'm donating, I don't do a monthly donation. I do a, a like a one time. That might be the equivalent of oh, that's this much per month kind of thing for the year. I'll do that, but um, be, I can never trust my income enough to go. Oh, you know, I want this much com coming out of my checking account every month because uh, it, every month is different. So. Oh, the T5, yeah. The, yeah, the T5 is great. Now, okay, I have a question for you, Holly, because this is my question with you, bud. Um, six guitars for now. All right. So, uh, now I'm going to guess that you string your T5 with acoustic strings. Am I correct? So, in other words, wound G string, phosphor bronze, or, or bronze strings. Am I correct? Just one more. That's right, Renee. How many guitars is enough? Just one more. For me, I'm like, people say, well, how many guitars can you play at a time? And I'm like, well, pretty much one. But do you give your mechanic a hard time for having more than one tool? <laughs> do you want your mechanic to have more than one tool? You have six electrics and seven acoustics. Oh, so you already have acoustics. Do you not have a nylon? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to get next. I don't have any plans for anything in particular. Um, what was the last thing I got? I think the last thing I got was the, was the pin, uh, this thing, which Bruce, by the way, is tuned like a cigar box guitar. Who knows? Maybe my next guitar might be a cigar box guitar. <laughs> Bruce is like, what? You got someone you're going to buy one from?
So this is from uh, from uh, Thailand. And uh, actually, one of my composers that I work for bought it for me because we're working on a show that takes place in Thailand. It's three strings tuned. Uh, right now, I think I'm, is that D? Mm -hmm. Yeah, D, D, A, D. So it's tuned like a power chord. But, but the interesting thing is, <laughs> it's not chromatic frets. And I don't know why they put the names there, but because I'm not, it's, it, the, those frets don't mean anything to me. The, those, it's, and it's, uh, is it under like, oh no, it's stickers. I can take those stickers off. I might take those stickers off. It's pretty funny because they're not, they don't actually correlate to anything. Although I can use it to learn a little bit of a tie, which is interesting because the F in tie looks a lot like the B in tie. Um, but I I thought it was pronounced it pronounced fin p h i n but it's pin. When you see in Thailand, my my uh, I told you my cousin lives in Thailand, in Bangkok. Oh, take a sip. I changed guitars, everybody. Everybody, take a sip. Come on. Um, there's there's a couple interesting instruments I might pick up. Uh, you know, well, okay, here's, I wouldn't mind, I'm a Strat player. I wouldn't mind getting a pre-CBS Strat. I could totally get a refin. I don't care if it's original or not. If I got an original one, it, may co it might cost me $50,000. I don't. I had a chance to buy a refin for twenty five hundred back in the day, and I, it was a lot of money. I mean, it's a lot of money anyway, but it was a lot of money back then. And now, if I had it, it would be worth fifteen thousand. Um, not that I would sell it, but I, I'm looking for a Strat that kind of has that a really good tone. Um, you know, the pickup tone is just. Is about as classic strategy you can get, um, but I do like my strap. But the pickups on are the noiseless pickups, which tend to be a little bit nasally sounding, um, and I'm used to it. Alex just got the exact same model and only in red. Um, okay, he's used to hearing that sound. Um, I have a I have an 1980 strap that's a hardtail, which means no whammy bar. Um, that I overpaid for, but it was someone had donated it to the church, and then they, we were having an auction to get stuff. So and so I bought it for what I saw the highest price on e, on eBay. I think I paid nineteen hundred for it, uh, which is it's still baby. It's maybe now worth nineteen hundred, and I bought it ten years ago. So it's raining here too. We love it. My lemon tree is doing well. Um, Yeah, the fin, well, uh, the headstock's gone. You should see it with the headstock. <laughs> that stupid. Wait, okay, I'll show you the headstock. Did I not? I, I thought I showed you this. Hold on a second. No, that's not what I want. Where's, I got to try to find this photo. Hold on a second. Oh, man. I know I put it somewhere. Ah, here it is. Okay. It's kind of scary looking. Ah, oh, hilarious. Oh my goodness. How big is this photo? It's a big photo. Just got to keep making it smaller. <laughs> There it is. Look at that headstock. Can I rotate it? Hmm. But yeah, that so it unscrews. So I unscrewed the headstock because it was way too heavy, neck heavy. So I, the, fortunately, it unscrews. But yeah, that's a crazy thing. Um, let me delete. Hold on a second. 
remove. So that's called a pin, P-H-I-N. So in Thailand, my cousin says, if it's T-H, like Thailand, it's hard to, but if it's T, it's, it has the T-H sound. It's the opposite. And if it's P, it has the P-H sound. And if it's P-H, it has the P sound. So in Thailand, it's like, okay, well, and I should have guessed that because Thailand is spelled with a T-H, right? Um, so he was teaching me that, but, um, so I got to rotate this. Oh, well, why is it? Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this. Let's see. Let me duplicate this photo. It's such a big photo. I'm just going to grab the headstock here. So it's brown. Now, I don't know. Is it going to drop in? Yeah, see, there's the headstock. You see the tuner clipped on there. I think it's got a little eye, and <laughs> it's like, what the heck? Is this the photo here? No, it's my last one. I want this photo here. There we go. So you can see it's kind of a crazy little instrument, little headstock. Um, almost looks like it's designed to keep evil spirits away. <laughs> so... Uh, I removed it, so there's plenty of evil spirits around. I saved it. I didn't get rid of it or anything like that, but yeah. So that's kind of a weird little thing. That was probably the most recent instrument I've gotten. If I, let me see. Well, the seven string, yeah, that was all, yeah, the, I got the pin after the seven string. So I mean, yeah, I'm not sure. I do, I do have an idea for uh, another weird stringing for one of my uh, many, many, many squires. Um, I'm kind of trying to clear out a little bit of my wall over here you can't see because I'm having a painting uh, commissioned for that wall and it's going to be a pretty big painting maybe too big I don't know. hopefully it's not too it, hopefully it won't be too overwhelming uh, for the room it's not like a I'm, I'm hoping it's a pretty modest I'm you know it's a, a friend of mine who's an artist and, and um, uh, I'm hoping it's not too crazy because it, it'll be big in the room I'm like ah oh, you know but anyway, we'll see. Okay, yep, see you, see you, Jan. I'm going to take off too. You have a C45. Uh, paid for it, used, looks and sounds great. C45, C45, what is that? Yeah, it's cold there, huh? Yeah, we're, we're cold. Our high today is 57, I think, which is really cold for California in almost April. Um, we got 70s all week, so. Oh, it's going to start, wait. Oh, the rain's going to stop in 51 minutes. Bummer. Well, then we'll get more tonight. Okay, good. I want as much rain as possible. But if it stops, I can maybe go get some lunch. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> and here the weather, you know. Oh, shoot. See, like I said, I'd be a lousy weatherman because I can never point in the right direction. You really got to practice that. All right. So I will see you maybe enlarge the nose. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Dennis. No live stream next week. Um, I'll, I'll make I'll make a, a a note to I could do a remote, but from while I'm driving, <laughs> we could do that. Uh, but anyway, God bless you, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for keeping me keeping me from being lonely. And uh, I will see you um, in two weeks. And uh, I'll try to find a riffy song. I'll kind of try to come up with a riffy song we can kind of mess with. Riff songs are great because they're kind of like indisputed. That's exactly how they played it, uh, usually. Um, we'll see. We'll see what riff. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna telegraph anything yet. So, um, and then I do. I do think I'll, we'll do some power chord song at some point too, so we can kind of work on our kind of thing. So, <laughs> our all right. Everybody, take care. God bless you. Be safe. Uh, stay warm. Bye-bye.